All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. We're going to start off here. Jason's running the camera, so yeah. he's here. Hey, you got your mic on? No, we're not mic'd up anymore. I think the man was that piece of crap. <laughs> Things are maybe making the video quality worse, so maybe comment down below. Maybe we should buy some DJIs. Um, let's start off with the small stuff first. Obviously, Strange Engineering. Now, we ordered this stuff direct through Quarter Max or RJ Race Cars and got... Hooked up with those guys over there. This is probably a receipt. No, it's not a receipt. We don't want to open that on camera, but. So, we went with the longest travel shock they had, so I don't know which one it is on here, but this is longer than we've ran on anything else just because when I talked with Adam over there. I said, hey, Adam, Adam here. Uh, obviously, he said, which I assume, the longer the shock you run is not a downfall. It's just more of a benefit for suspension travel when you take off from the line because you know we're big drag racers now mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah we think we can do everything watch out burnout van yeah burnout van <laughs> big drag racer burnout van which one did you open up here got the hyper coils oh look at this Aww. NASCAR competition partner moving on up in the world unfortunately blue oh <laughs> shit uh, we might have to talk to 710 Motorsports about maybe changing the color of these springs, too. We're working on some stuff with 710 Motorsports on uh, those ugly wheels that I know people have commented on. But look, guys, we can't afford nothing else to do. So <laughs> unless there's a rim sponsor out there, which we're trying to look, because I'd like some nice billet wheels on there with nice... Mm -hmm. Billet specialties? Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and obviously this leads up to the main package, but... The big dog, 40 spline axles. I don't know what the measurements are. It says two and a quarter, so. The long Who knows? studs. Oh, yeah. Um, looks like the newest axles here actually have an access hole. That one does here for, the other one's never had the access hole in here to put your uh, T-bolt bolts on there, so that's kind of nice. And then obviously that leads up to the main package, which uh, did say on the other side it was for a G-body, but. I think that's just the box. It's just a bare housing. This is quick performance, so. Ooh, rush, Jason. Look at that. Rush, See? Yep. We did get bumped up the line, so I gotta say thank you to the guys over at Quick Performance for knocking this thing out right away. I know they're way behind on orders and stuff, but you know, they always hook up boosted, right? I think they like us a little bit, Jason. So got a good discount on this. So again, you guys need anything, uh, rear ends. Brake kits. I don't even know what all I do. Quickperformance.com. Check them out, guys. Everything. Off-road racing, burnouts, drag mm -hmm. racing. Uh, so I do have the four-link brackets for this, and I showed in the previous video all of the tubes and hind joints and all that stuff. So the goal for this video is um, Jason will probably leave, so I'll be on my yeah, own. Yeah, exactly. And we got to get this under the car. So we need a rolling chassis because... We've got, unfortunately, we're going to pull off the project, guys, and it sounds like a normal thing here at Boosted yeah. Ride. You know, we start on something like Goliath and then throw it out back, pasture it. I don't think we'll but, throw this out back. but No, but we just need to get some stuff going with Death Trap and, well, all of them, to be well, honest with you. We need to make the oil tank larger on Crypt Keeper, the panel, so that way we don't run out of oil with that. Otherwise, the vent system, I think we're good with that one. I mean, we need to do other things like... Seal the, seal the back up and yeah. stuff. Put a box over top of the fuel cell. Yeah, and close the fuel cell. I mean, that's... I don't paint, want to say, paint the inside and under yeah, the hood. Jason's got big dreams. He better get over here and do something. But but as far as that, as mechanically wise to run again, it really needs the oil. Oh, yeah. Rebuild the transmission. Oh, shit. That's the biggest thing. It still has second gear, I guess. Uh, so. I guess. Okay, transmission and build off of the oil tank for more capacity. Burning green at this point, obviously, with this getting not done. What do we got to do? We need a catch tank. We're going to put a new catch tank in the box this time so we can have yep. a large volume capacity for all of our crankcase pressure, just like the Aussies do it. And then I think that one's pretty much ready to go. Unless we do dry sump. Yeah, talking about doing dry sump, which would be ideal, but I don't know. We'll see if we have time for that. And then death trap, I don't know. We're really not sure. We need to do the same thing with... Uh, catch tank in the box as well and that one will be more permanent bird and green obviously we just need to throw something together because hopefully the motor and stuff comes out and goes in here and then we'll worry about that for a drag and drive project maybe in the future because again we don't have a title to the camaro unfortunately guys so this is going to be 
just drag racing at the local track or taking it to Bradenton when we go down sometimes or whatever the case is. But all right, well, let's get to it. Enough rambling on. Jason's got work to do so he can help before he leaves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I brought some more stuff. Oh, so. oh, all right. We'll move up front. He did do something. He actually brought something. That's why he came, to be honest. And I did put an uh, Instagram post out there if you don't follow, but I did get our headers in from Speed Engineering. Not a sponsorship deal. If they want to sponsor us, we'll take some more headers. But we got these gaskets with it, but I did order the metal multi-layer ones. These ones are just... So. But these are two-inch stainless headers. So the biggest you can get primary-wise, I think this is honestly the biggest you can get for a 5th Gen Camaro, down to a three-inch collector. At this point, we'll see how this fits under the car, because it's like Jason said, it's pretty long. So hopefully it's not hanging down too low. That's what she mm -hmm. said. <laughs> oh, boy. But as far as the quality and stuff, these are what are on burning green, and, you know, the welds are far superior to mine, so I like it. We did get bolts as well. Um, and Jason broke the package. Yep. It's like the last but the, one. But the roll cage is here. So we got our main hoop, our uh, halo, whatever you want to call it. Here. Yeah, there we go. Roof bar, and all the rest of the tubing. I hope it's all there anyway. So the package was complete before Jason got here with it. It was actually very nicely shipped. So uh, it looks it's like on we, a pallet. So. Looks like every tube is probably going to have to be coped. Maybe not. Maybe when we pull the caps off, it is. But well, this one ain't, and that's going to be. Oh, yeah, them. that's got to be coped into this. So, okay, well, we got a little bit of work to do, I guess. We? So. You got to turn your pocket? <laughs> I got a paint marker to mark it out, I guess. That's it. So, all right, now let's get to it. All right, guys, this may or may not be a longer video. I'm going to try and go a little more in-depth than I normally do on a lot of builds. So we've got our brackets here that are going to go around the rear end, and these have been notched out for this back brace. We're not going to worry about those at this point because we need to make sure we clean up this weld area and areas like this. There's a relief cut in the brackets for a small weld, but you know when they wrap this weld around here, there is a pretty good pump of weld there. So we just need to clean that up, make sure all this area here on this back brace is cleaned up. We'll do the same thing. Down on this end here, like I said, there's a weld hanging over there. Got some weld BBs. Because what I want to do is, I always take these brackets out here on this outside edge, tack them together, and then slide the brackets on. And as you can tell, they don't slide over there. But if they were up on here, we would be good. This is obviously a bracket for the other side, but you get the idea. And they were made to be split directly in half. I don't know if this is the exact match it is so that is exactly a three inch tube i think it's going to need to be cleaned up a little bit in some of this radius area but when we get there you'll see it so let's go ahead i got the uh, grinder we'll go ahead and clean up some of this and get this area all ready to go so we can slide the tubes on there i mean the rest of this feels like it's good so we'll just get that cleaned up and we'll go from there Well, just a little bit of touch-up work to these. You know, when these get cut, when you plasma cut or laser cut any parts, the, I'll over-exaggerate this, but the flame, say it's going down from the top, is always going to have some kerf. Now, it could be, technically, it could be negative or positive, but usually you'll get a little bit of a smaller hole on the back side is what typically happens. So, on the back side of these, I just ran my 5 8 and just just touched the back side of these and went through all those. Drilled these out for 3 8 just because I'm using a 3 8 grade 8 bolt and the shank up here when you get to this no thread part is just a little 
little tight, so I ran the drill bit all the way through just to make sure I cleaned them all up. So now we're ready to set up here and actually get these brackets. Now the only thing with these, right or wrong, guys, we're, I'm not. I'm showing you how we're building it. I'm not saying it's right. Um, it's probably not, and we'll figure that out the hard way. But these brackets, let's just say they're sitting like that. They are designed for zero pinion angle, meaning this shape cut out here, this back section that's going to go around this brace is just going to be exactly how this is. This is not turned up or down. It's exactly, well, can't say it's exactly, but it should be 90 degrees. It's perpendicular to the face of it, long story short. So yeah, we're just gonna go with it. You know, being a four link car and having the, this isn't the right one, but having your upper and lower bar, we can obviously adjust, lengthen or shorten. And we'll do that because we're making our own bar. So we can do that at that time. So let's go ahead and set the camera up here and see if we can uh, screw this up. Need to get some outside measurements, get some uh, rod ends clamped in here, bolted in there with some regular nuts and let's start getting it put together. Okay, so we got all the four-link brackets. I just put small welds on here off camera, but as you see me put all the billet adapters and stuff in there and some rod ends up here just to space everything. Yeah, it's looking good. Um, they are probably just slightly out on the bottom, but we won't talk about that. So uh, let's go over underneath the car now. Since this is all ready to go, again, needs welded off, but everything's basically stitched on there. We'll go over to the car and we'll work on the other brackets. So now underneath the car, I took a couple more rod ends, top and bottom, and I did put some uh, three pieces of quarter inch scrap material in here, sandwich that. So now we just gotta get our measurement from the sides over. And I got the same thing over here on the passenger side, and we can tack these in. And the next step's gonna be make some uh, tubing with some rod adapters and all the stuff that we got up on the bench up there. So let's go ahead and get these all measured out, marked, tacked into place. And then we can actually bring that rear end over here and see what it looks like and make the rod ends, tubes, whatever, four link bars. Okay, so as you've seen there, we went ahead and measured up the tubes with the rod ends in there, and I came up with the measurement on the computer, so hopefully it's right, or at least remotely close. Obviously, you got some adjustment here with these rod ends. So cut those, got these uh, TIG welded just on one side, just in case there is an issue. I've got all the ends set to exactly the same length. 
And so now we need to get that rear end housing over here. The girls are over here uh, trying to shave a dog. Cutting the rat. Poor Bella. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I guess it's free. We're not paying anything. I'm sorry, Bella. <laughs> I'm sorry you got to go through this. So yeah, I'll bring that rear end over here and then put the lower bars in. And then I don't think I'm going to go off the computer for the upper ones at this point. Um, we'll see here. We'll get it put in there get it clocked at a certain position and then we'll take a measurement just to see where it actually falls and then we'll verify it against the computer. If it's close, I'm gonna go with it. But again, remember, we have no pinion angle in this. I don't really know where it should be because we don't have a drive shaft or transmission in to know where the training is gonna be at. But all right, well, let's, let's try and do something here. We need to see this thing rolling around. Well, as you last seen there, we were putting the four link bars in. So I dug out my panhard bar kit because the next thing we want to work on is this panhard bar to keep your rear end centered inside the frame. So basically right now with this four link bars, for anybody new to this, this rear end, because these heim joints can move, can be moved from side to side. So I have a tab one on top of the rear end. Obviously there'll be another one in front of this to sandwich a bar that's gonna come straight across. Now this is our, what we want to be our ride height. I should specify that. So all these measurements for bars and everything, this is all made where we expect the rear end to be at ride height. Now, you want your panhard bar, to my knowledge, to be basically flat. So we got the tabs for the rear end, and then we've got tabs to also come over here off the bottom of the frame. Now that should put us pretty close to flat. Now the reason for that is because as the bar drops, the bar length doesn't change. So as the ruin comes down, the ruin's actually going to swing this way. I'm over exaggerating obviously. And then as the ruin goes up, it's going to push that way. So if you're in the center of the arc at your ride height, it should be minimal travel both directions. Um, unfortunately, I pulled out the pan hard bar kit and I, I don't know. I didn't order a whole kit. Long story short, burning green, I thought I'd bent this tube. So I'd called up quarter max. I ordered a new tube and new rod and tube adapters. And we also ordered this a little bit bigger, thicker tube because we were planning on basically doubling up that pan hard bar and making it like that. Well, unfortunately, I didn't have a left hand heim joint so i found these upstairs and they're both right hand and this is the one with the hex on it i know is left hand so unfortunately whatever kit i had upstairs wasn't going to work so i found this gentleman on facebook thank you to him for meeting me halfway with this competition engineering uh, panhard bar kit it's a c2037 now, what I really needed was just this rod end. I don't know if this works in our tube. Uh, no, it does not. So it looks like we're gonna be using the entire kit, which is fine. The other rod end is already welded in. We'll just have to clean all this up. Maybe we'll just buzz back over top of that. Cut it to length. We've got tabs here. This bracket is not going to do me any good. 
No, I mean, that's way too long. I don't even know what that would even work on, but, well, I guess, I don't know. But anyway, so we got to get some tab, a couple more tabs. This is a half inch bolt, it looks like, going through there. And these original ones, oh, idiot Adam, they're half inch as well. No, these aren't the original ones. They are only three eighths. Um, I'm just thinking here, as I'm telling you guys, I know why they're three eighths, and that's because the rod ends are actually half inch. I'm trying to think back to doing the other ones. Then they send you a little bushing piece that goes in here, which I think is made to widen it. And that reduces it to three eighths. That's how they ended up. Because I was on their website and I was wondering how they had it listed as their billet piece went with a three eighths bolt. That's why. So bottom line, we'll have to use some grade eight hardware. We'll get some uh, grade eight bolts, but all right. Well, let's get some tabs. We'll do that in the morning and get this panhard bar, take a couple measurements to make sure where the shocks are gonna be. We might have to remove this tube up here that I just temporarily put in and actually put our round bar in there. I mean, we could always use a square rectangle tube one, but I usually do round. So we'll figure that out in the morning, get shocks in there. And then again, this is all just tacked up. So we gotta be kind of careful with it. And then we can cut this wheel well somewhat I mean, I want to trim it later, but we'll temporarily cut it open so we can get a tire in there at least. And we can put the axles in and we can set this thing down for the first time and see what it looks like. So I'll be back out here in the morning and we'll continue the progress. Okay, well, next up, new day, Sunday, and we're going to have this thing done. So I've got the rear end in here and it's pretty much leveled up. I've double checked from corner to corner to make sure that it's square inside of here and then i went ahead and threw on one shock here stood it up in here kind of got some measurements and some stuff there and had some tabs made to mimic our shock location so we're going to go ahead and bolt these onto this top ear and basically what they're going to do is wrap off the bottom of the frame here so I wanted to make sure I had a little extra support, a little extra meat here so we can wrap a weld down. And then I do have just a little piece to put on top of here to close. Obviously there's gonna be a gap here. I could separate them. I think the shock is three quarter wide. So there'll be a gap up here. So I'll have a little plate to go over top of this to keep the top reinforced. I don't think there's going to be an issue, but I'll just double check all my measurements here just to make sure that we're centered. I mean, this is obviously going to make the location of the shock, but I'm going to level it up using the digital level both directions. If there is slightly a difference, this front to left to right, I'll just weld the gap in, but it should be good. So we'll double check all that and then tack them in and then we are one step closer to getting the panhard bar in.
I gotta say, I am pretty damn, pretty damn proud of myself. Do some good work, I think. Give myself a pat on the back there, but it's looking sweet, guys. So we got the pan hard bar in, got the tabs all tacked in. Shocks are obviously in. These things have massive amounts of travel. I, I wanna say it's seven inches. I don't have the paper in front of me. Should put the coil springs on here. And you know what? I mean, taking measurements and just double checking everything, we're within, within a 16th for sure, and actually even better than that. So that's why I say I'm pretty proud of myself. Trying to keep this one, not that I wasn't doing a good job on the rest of them, but just making sure that everything as it goes in is squared up the best it can be. You know, making sure the shocks, not that they can't be tilted a little bit because they're on these ball sockets anyways, so they can rotate. You know, same with your pan hard bar, stuff like that. But everything's looking good. I traveled it down and traveled it all the way up through the suspension travel. Everything looks good. I think what we're gonna do, because I don't want to end this video off without you know, setting it down on the ground and having a shot of it, seeing what it's gonna look like. I don't have burnout tire. We're gonna have to find something for tires because I don't feel like taking them off of that independent rear suspension over there. I don't think I have any burnout tires with tires on it. So we might have to jack something up, take it off of that. But we're gonna get this wheel tub cut out next and put some springs on here, which I hope are not a pain in the rear. Some of these can be an absolute bear if they're the full length and you can barely get the nut started. We'll find out because this does take a 14 inch, I think, 14 inch long shock for these because they are the longer ones. But yeah, get some axles pounded in there, wheel tubs cut out, we'll figure out some tires, and then we'll end off this video. Uh, it's a little bit longer than usual, but like I said, I just want to document more if I can on this build, try to anyways. I know at some point I'm gonna fail here, guys, unfortunately, but let's, let's try to do our best. So let's get that taken care of and get some wheels on it and let's set this thing down on the ground. Super pumped. All right, so just a quick little uh, deal here. These are, I just wanna go over this just in case I ever wanna look back at my information and we may or may not be right with the springs, but these are strange double adjustable and they are seven inch travel. So they're an S5007 is the part number. Buy them at Jigs or Summit. Like I said, I bought mine direct from uh, RJ Race Cars, Quarter Max, and I've had good luck with those guys all the time. I know they're just a strange dealer. It's nothing they make. Now, on these, they send you two washers and a needle roller bearing. So this is to go onto the seat where the spring is going to set to help that spring be able to rotate. Now, these springs here are from Strange as well. They're hyper coils. Part number on these, um, well, I guess I can give you the part number as well. They're a 1814B0200. So they're 14 inch tall, two and a half diameter, and these are 200 pound springs. This is where I have no clue what we're doing. We're gonna, we'll soon find out. I mean, for burnouts, it doesn't really make a difference. I mean, I'm sure it does to an extent. Oop, need to extend this all the way out. It probably does make a difference for burnouts, but quite frankly, I mean, I can I can maintain whatever. It's not that big of a deal, but for drag racing, this will be a huge deal. Now, there's this uh, top spring perch, I guess you can call it. So that's why I extended that out all the way. And then you slip this on here. It's got a notch in it. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this up so I know it's seated. I guess you guys can't even see anything. There you go. So you got this top spring perch. Just gonna go ahead and it seats up on this top collar here and then pull the spring up into it. And then we can go ahead and crank our first nut up. Get that up there against that spring. Now you gotta make sure that you got the name the right way on that spring too, you know, cause you know, everybody's gonna see that. <clears throat> and then you need to measure from the bottom down here how far. I've got the other one set up over there. I don't know where ride height is with an adjustment on this, so I'm just hand screwing this up basically to where I can, to be honest with you. So we'll go ahead and run this up there, somewhere up in here, and then just run this uh, lock nut up. Now I'll just measure between the two of them when I get them over there and on the car. We'll make sure that this is remotely close. Let's see what we got here.
Yeah, probably needs to go a little bit more. But again, we can adjust all that stuff later. So that's how you put those on there. Sometimes they are a bear because if you have a shock that's basically minimum extended length for like a 12 inch long spring, um, it's a real pain in the butt. I have taken the Allen out of this before. Now, strange if you're listening, I'm sorry that I did this, but I have taken the Allen out of this uh, compression adjuster and I've taken this rebound Allen screws out. I never had any bad luck, but that would allow you to get this uh, lock collar off and then get this first nut threaded down even further yet to give you a you know, quarter inch or so more out of this. So if you have any troubles with that, just an idea. Don't take my advice because I don't know what I'm doing. All right, let's go cut the wheel wells out and put these back on, axles in, and some wheels. Well, moment of truth, guys. I went ahead and got the hoist basically down to the ground. I threw on the original front tires and had the burnout tires on the wheel uh, on the wheels on the back. I'm hoping the anticipation is is that it is sitting downward. I have a fear that these springs might be a little bit too too heavy. So let's go ahead and find out what happens. And the other fear is is that maybe some tack components fall apart. Hopefully not. We'll go nice and easy here. Hopefully we see a lot of compression. Now, there's still a lot of weight that needs to go into the back end, so we got to keep that in mind as well. And we're rolling away. Yeah. Well, yeah, you got to think about everything. There's no motor in there, so look at our front wheel gap. We got monster wheel gap here. And monster wheel gap. Looks like we're making an off roading machine. But that is things for the future to work on. Because again, we're gonna be pulling off of this project. Unfortunately, I just realistically, I don't have any money to continue to fund the project. I have a lot of this main stuff bought, but you know, when you guys get down to the last nitty gritty things, that's when everything starts adding up, whether it's the fittings, the braided hose, just every nitpick and little thing, all the wiring and all that stuff. So unfortunately, I think before I get in too deep, I'm gonna call it, we're gonna work on the panel, Crip Keeper, Vernon Green, and Death Trap, make sure that those things are top notch, because if you guys don't know already, I think there's Kyle, obviously, and Luxifer, and there's four other ones that are coming over, and I think they're all gonna be at the Freedom Factory, so I wanna make sure what we do take is ready to run, and hopefully kick some ass, guys. So, we need to, uh, we need to show them what us Americans are made of, I know the Aussies have been doing it for years, and obviously they're leaps and bounds ahead of us, but let's show them that we got what it takes to compete with them. So that's going to do it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you made it through the end of the video, uh, let me know. I appreciate that, guys. So like, comment, share, and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.